Pause. Danke. Ja. Ja. Ach so, genau, Pause. Also ich würde äh, gerne zwei. Ja. Cargo 8387 this time. We are going back home to Frankfurt. Hello and welcome on our final segment flight. Uh, you may remember the air clips part one and two. We um, flew from Frankfurt to Narita in, um, International in Tokyo, had a one night and a stop at the sushi bar and you may recall we then went on to part two a short two-hour flight from uh, Tokyo to Incheon in Seoul South Korea and uh, had another layover a stop and uh, some again beautiful uh, meal with uh, uh, Korean barbecue it's a specialty here very nice and uh, now we're getting ready to go home again to Frankfurt. How did you, how did you like it, guys? So far, so good. Uh, we only had around 24 hours here in uh, Seoul, so that's not too much because we had to sleep, get a little bit sleep from um, before, from the last flight, and then also try to get some sleep before this flight because at home it's now shortly after six o'clock and here we have one o'clock in the morning so that's quite a challenge and uh, so far I'm feeling very well but uh, let's see uh, after 10 hours and uh, how it looks like there there's room for change <laughs> there's room for change but so far so good and um, yes this time we have a special flight and um, the last part of our uh, flight back home to Frankfurt uh, which is going to be uh, filmed on the landing so you will also have uh, scenery, beautiful scenery of the landing from the outside which is being performed from our first officer Benjamin today. Yeah so it's my turn to uh, fly us all back to Frankfurt. Um, the, the flight time was calculated with uh, around 10 hours and 30 minutes today. Um, yeah we'll, we'll start from Seoul to the west and uh, we'll enter uh, China very quickly and then we'll overfly Beijing. Then we'll turn to the north, fly through uh, Mongolia and from uh, there on we'll fly into Russia and then it's been around, I don't know, eight hours through Russia until we re uh, reach Europe and yeah. uh, enter the German airspace somewhere at the end. Yeah, it should be a, a good good flight. It should be a good flight. You yeah. may recall we had a, a cars on board going out to, from Frankfurt to Tokyo and uh, to Seoul we had two pregnant horses and um, now we've got two cars again uh, except for all the rest of the cargo naturally we've uh, some up almost 98 tons metric tons 98,000 kilograms of um, cargo and that requires roughly 97 97.5 tons of fuel uh, with the reserves so um, almost fully loaded today. Uh, yeah, so any uh, final words before we get going? Yeah, I wish you a, a lot of fun watching us flying the triple seven back home. Of course, it's going to be an adventure as always. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Right here we are. Uh, before each flight, one of the crew members has to do the so-called walk around. It's the final check, outside check, to make sure the plane is intact, no obvious damage, and uh, that it's good for the flight, basically. And uh, that's what we're gonna do now. Let's have a look. And as always, I start at the uh, nose wheel. I hope you can hear me, there's a lot of uh, sounds from all the outlets and air rushing in and out. We've got the uh, panel here from uh, the most field here. We 
need to check if uh, all systems are normal and no warnings. I'll check my uh, tires, they're looking fine, no obvious cuts. Yeah, that's fine. And our lights, obviously. Glass is fine, the well as well. This looks clean. I pay particular notice to our Pluto tubes. Here the uh, lower forward cargo hold is closed. We have our static ports. We use them to measure altitude and speed. Very important for air travel. Now I walk to our right engine, which also has static ports. I need to check the fan blades any foreign objects, the spinner. And here again, it's basically looking for any obvious damage. Are the tires looking fine? Do I have cuts? If I do have cuts, I need to measure them. Make sure they are within limits. Down here, I've got brake wear indicators. They show that the brakes are fine. And the hydraulic tubes and hoses that connect to the brakes need to be clean and no no signs of obvious leakage and again tires can be your tires and brakes can be your best friends when you land but this all looks good okay back side of the engine, high bypass ratio engines, the biggest in the industry. Isn't it beautiful? Now I walk along the right wing, make sure there are no dents or anomalies. You never know, a lot of movement on the ground, so every now and again they bump you and put a dent into the plane. Navigational lights looking good, and from here I'll take a look at the stabilizer and uh, elevator and so forth fuselage I have a quick look over looks fine and the rear hold is closed the bulk as well At the trailing edges of basically all surfaces, we do have static dischargers to get rid of, to basically to lead the, if, should we have a lightning strike, to guide this uh, lightning away from the, from the plane and minimize the damage to the actual plane. We have the flat, antennas and some drainage these planes operate at at all sorts of temperatures so you do get condensation within the plane and all that water needs to drain out of the plane so we have lots of drain ports again I'm checking for brake wear indicators any leakage Here's a small cut, but this one is, I know this by heart, it's uh, within limits. As long as it's not down to the carcass, which is the inner lining of the, of the uh, tire. And again, there's a small cut there. That's normal. Whenever the tires get worn down, we just change them, put a new one on, which takes about 30 to 40 minutes. So that's usually done on a ground stop. Looking good. Here the fuel truck is putting in the last drops of our 97.5 tons. And 
left wing is looking clean no obvious dents or damage and the navigational lights are fine good so we're almost at the end just need to take a look at the last engine we only have two but big ones static port and again I have a look at the spitter in the middle the fan blades any dents that may have occurred due to foreign objects but it all looks fine right pan static port and on the fuselage on the left hand side we have four on the right hand side we have three you may have noticed here we've got four we've got backup and standby static ports as well and that just about concludes the walk around now we just need to get back up and finalize calculate for the takeoff and then we go This way, please. Just uh, finalized the performance takeoff calculation. Yeah, and agreed on uh, on the values. We've entered them into our flight management system. That's correct. So we have uh, our speeds that we need uh, for the takeoff and uh, even for the rejected takeoff. Yes. And now we carry on. We've uh, pretty much we've finished the loading and uh, given all our papers, the paperwork is finalized. So now we've got a few more minutes to do a few checklists and uh, a briefing. Yes. And then uh, we'll ask for the clearance. All right. Very good. So let's go with the uh, pre-flight checklist. Please. All right. Pre-flight, gear prints removed. Pedo static. Checked. Oxygen. Tested, 100%. Tested 100%. Flight instruments. Heading 333, altimeter 1010, 40 feet. Heading 333, altimeter uh, 1010, 40 feet. Check is complete. Very good. So go ahead and ask for a um, startup clearance. Please. Yeah, I get the data link clearance. Copy from ground. Yes, ground, go ahead. Uh, maybe disconnect the ground powers. Yeah, stand by. I'm disconnecting the primary. Yeah, go ahead. All right, let's close the door and head towards uh, back home towards Frankfurt Airport. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Slide is in flight, and we're ready to go. Ground from cockpit, you may remove ground electric. Copy that, we will disconnect. Thank you. Flight plan not held, revert to voice procedures. Okay, so give them a call. Yeah, I'm looking up the frequencies. Oh, 
Beach Hotel. Hotel okay. Uh, Soul Delivery, good night, Lufthansa Cargo 8387 Heavy, position 626 to Frankfurt, Information Hotel, uh, fully ready, request clearance. Lufthansa Cargo 8387 Heavy, in San Priori, clear destination 8338 left, Dupic 1, Lima Departure, then Groove 597, level 280, squawk 7413. Uh, Lufthansa Cargo 8387, 33 left, no pick 1 Lima departure, level 280, and after no pick, go 597 and uh, squawk 7413. Lufthansa Cargo 8387 is automatically correct and say your departure weather minimal. 200 uh, meters visible. Yeah. Uh, Lufthansa Cargo 837, that's 200 meters. Roger, Lufthansa Cargo 837, contact A-Prod 121-87. 12187, thank you, Lufthansa Cargo 837. Okay. okay. Alright. Um, 3 3 left, no pick 1 Lima, that's like entering the uh, flight management system. Yeah, doors are in, in auto. Sevi has. Uh, Set the doors to flight, which means uh, we are all ready to go. As soon as the step stairs have been pulled back, as yes, they have. Shall I first do the briefing, or go oh, ahead? We, we still have. Well, we don't have too much time, but uh, we don't have much taxi as well. Yeah, so, so I'll, do, it I'll now. do the briefing right yeah. now. All right. So we will be taking off from runway three three left. And it's going to be the no pick one Lima departure, that's an ANAF departure, um, we both checked the waypoints. Yeah. That's first to Sierra India 707, 713, Sonia and no pick. Uh, there are some minimum altitudes, that's 5000 feet at Sierra India 713, 10,000 at Sonia and uh, level 160 at no pick. Correct. We'll change altimeters at uh, 14,000 feet. Um, well, yeah, the initial climb altitude will be level 280 yep. as on the clearance. The uh, acceleration uh, with two engines will be at uh, 3000 feet. And the MSA in the departure sector is 2600 feet. Yeah. And um, yeah, we shall stay south of the radio 270 of Yankee Juliet uh, uniform to avoid flying into North Korea. North Korean airspace, yeah, we do have respect. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, about the departure frequency, we'll have to wait what tower will give us because there are three uh, frequencies given. Okay, sounds good. I have uh, basically, we've calculated the takeoff performance. Yeah. We are with the uh, coupled, uh, the, the sum of assumed temperature and uh, the, uh, well, we only have the assumed temperature, but we, yeah. we get a uh, total stopping distance of above 200 meters. And, yeah, that's uh, correct. We have dry conditions yes. and uh, no tailwind. So for me, that is a um, uncritical, non-critical rejected takeoff. All right. For any any uh, warnings or cautions that come through, uh, we'll keep the plane on the ground. Make sure the braking automation uh, is activated. And just uh, today, the visibility is a little uh, reduced, so we need to stay on the runway, make sure we follow that center line. Yeah. But except for that, it's a uh, standard procedure. All right. Okay. So, uh, one thing to say for me is the uh, engine out briefing. Go ahead. Um, yeah, we first uh, fly straight ahead until 10 miles of windy, uh, Whiskey November Golf. That's uh, set on the fixed page and also set on the right. NAF 8. That's basically the same like the uh, Sierra NTS 707. Yeah. And at that point we go left to the point Ronji. That's also set on a fixed page. MSA in this, uh, that sector is uh, 2600. The highest MSA is uh, 3900 over at the city. Um, I would say we'll climb uh, to 4000 yeah. initially. We are above max landing weight so uh, in case we, uh, we will dump fuel we have to climb a little bit higher. We'll just ask for yeah. permission and then we'll do it. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Sounds All good. All right. Yeah, that's it from my side. Sounds like a plan. Well, we have uh, the clearance to Frankfurt. Let's get a clearance to push back. All right. So I call Apron. Uh, Apron, good uh, evening. Lufthansa Cargo 8387 Heavy on position 6 to 6. Request pushback. Good evening, Lufthansa Cargo 8387. Pushback and start of approval. Lufthansa Cargo 8387. Pushback. Yes, go ahead. Please confirm uh, I may release the brakes. Uh, I checked the all ground clear, also the all doors are closed, staring clean, inserted. We are fully ready for the pushback, sir. You can release, uh, release the parking brake anytime you want. Okay, parking brake is released, and just uh, to confirm, we are uh, steering pin is inserted and we are clear for hydraulics as well. Uh, steering pin inserted, also gear doors and flaps area all clear. Thank you very much. Uh, just stand by uh, a couple of seconds, we'll call you back. Come stand by. Before start items. Start cabin. Secured. Mobile. Off. Off. MCP. V2181. Heading triple three. Altitude. Apron. Good morning. Level Korean Air 335. Request pushback and start up ten six one five. Good evening. Korean Air 335. Pushback and start up approve. Pushback and start up approve. Korean Air 335. We one one six nine we are one seven nine we two one eight one. CDU preflight completed. Trim five point zero units. Does it look like five? For me, it looks like five. Uh, I have to get the feeling it's just off, but it's okay. Five point oh zero uh, zero zero. Prefix completed. Check us complete. Ground for cockpit. Yes, go ahead. Parking brake released, ready for pushback. Copy that, we we'll push the aircraft. 55. Eric, you can order the other thing up Good point. Now I check the engines are all clear, sir. Very good, thank you. Starting up right and left. Up that right and left. So, start right engine. Pushback is completed, please set parking brake. 
Parking brake is set. Remove towing equipment and steering pin, please. Roger that. Before taxi items, flaps five. Yeah, now it's moving. Okay. Okay, ground, whenever you're ready, uh, steering pin uh, removed and towing equipment as well, I assume. I think the guy already ran away. Oh, no, no. Uh, coming from ground. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I just checked the we removed the, the steering pin and towing equipment completely, so I will give you a hand on your right side. And signal on the right, thank you very much, and uh, comes Omnida. Thank you, come to the Aokina Either full length or via Juliet. Yeah, we'll see. Rotanda Cargo 387, contact Tower 118 to good day. 82, Rotanda Cargo 837, good night. Lufthansa Cargo 8387 heavy on uh, that 3 reaching 4 Yankee. Lufthansa Cargo 8387 in Chantawa, departure at 833 left, taxi Delta in Juliet, hold short of 33 right. Delta Juliet holding short 33 right, uh, departure on the 33 left, Lufthansa Cargo 8387. So the second option, which means left, right, hold short, and then we'll go via Charlie down to Golf, full length. Yeah. And they have the uh, low visibility procedure, so that means two holding two points. points. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so it's basically follow the greens. Yeah. Lufthansa Cargo 837, cross at 833 right, Taxi Charlie and Golf. Crossing 33 right and uh, Charlie Golf, Lufthansa Cargo 837. As anticipated. Yeah, as you said it. Good evening, Korea. 
335, approaching spot 3 Yankee. Good evening, Korea 335, Incheon Tower, departure at 33 left, taxi via tail sign, Juliet. Who is it off next, 33 right? Yeah, short recap, um, it's an honor of departure, straight out 10 miles and then to the left, go climb level 280. And also in case of engine failure, we're going straight out to 10 miles and then doing a left turn. Runji. Yep. Sounds good. Fuel before takeoff is good. Before takeoff checklist. Before takeoff checklist complete. Checklist complete. Lufthansa Cargo A three A seven now road A three three left RBR to start above two thousand mid one thousand seven hundred road one thousand two hundred meters. Line off A three three left. Lufthansa Cargo A three eight seven line up on A three three left. Yeah, 3 left, Golf full length, 97 tons, looks good. Okay, you're probably going to take weather. I take the weather radar, yeah. Yeah, I'll go for terrain. Approaching 3, 3 left. Runway 337 wind 300 left, 33 left, careful takeoff. Runway 33 left, let's take off Lufthansa Cargo 8387. You ready? I'm ready. On runway 33 left. You have control. I have control. Take off. Trust. Set. Tight. Nice and tight. But 
the air is smooth. So yeah. It's, uh, oh, it's beautiful. It's good. Yeah. All right. I think I let the autopilot handle this. Good. So we'll just wait for the 14, and then yeah, that's good. Continue. Yeah, we also get a. Uh, remember to say hello to China in the next minutes. I'm on it. <laughs> right. yeah, the point is uh, Agavo. Yeah. Agavo. And call Italian. Uh, last time I had. I think it was 3295. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I already entered uh, what frequency? I think that's the correct one. Good, communicate. Lufthansa Cargo A3A7, contact in Shonkan Store 132 8. Lufthansa Cargo A3A7, 132.8. Hello to you, passing 125, uh, 1,500, Boeing, Lufthansa Cargo A387, in Southern Shore, climbing to 8,400 meters. Lufthansa Cargo A387, climbing 8,100 meters. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna get my air tools up and running. 400, that's like 27,600. It says unable next altitude, but uh, I think she earlier said uh, disregard altitude uh, yeah. restrictions. I just can't. 276 that. is checked. Fed, I can confirm that. Uh, she yeah. said cancel altitude restrictions. Okay, thanks. Transition. Standard level 150. 150 standard on both and. Yeah, turn off the lights, uh, erase the fixed pages, and uh, we also can uh, delete the nothings. More clear. And perhaps simple signs. Yeah, we can turn them on auto. See, it in auto. flight and um, as I am the pilot monitoring now and the captain is in his well-deserved uh, break that's the reason also why I'm sitting here and I would like to hand over um, the radio telephony to uh, Benjamin so I can uh, focus a little bit more on what I'm uh, telling you so Benjamin you have RT? Yeah I've got a few. All right so Benjamin is the pilot uh, flying right now now you might wonder why is uh, it me uh, sitting here at the captain seat? And the reason for that, as I just uh, mentioned already, captain, um, the captain has his break, uh, his well-deserved break, and and the reason for that, I'm his deputy during his uh, break. Now you could almost say I'm in charge right now. That's not completely true, because when uh, something happens which needs a quick reaction then of course uh, I need to be here and, uh, and Benjamin and me we are uh, we're focusing that problem now um, for example if we have a rapid decompression then we need to react quite straight away and there's no time for the captain to get out of his break and uh, be here within time because if we are high now we're not cruising that high we're cruising in an altitude of 
30,000 or flight level 301, which is equal to 9,200 meters, but Benjamin will tell us a little bit more after that. Um, that means we have enough time to um, get the oxygen mask and be ready. Um, when we are higher, then sometimes you just have 20 seconds uh, until your unconsciousness. Uh, so that means you need to be pretty, uh, pretty uh, fast about that. Another example would be if we had an engine failure, for example, then you also need to react quickly and uh, be prepared. And after the initial um, uh, recovery of that problem, of course, we call our captain and he comes back uh, onto the flight deck and takes over control. So that's uh, basically um, right now for um, what I'm doing here. Some uh, airlines, they call it not senior first officer at Lufthansa, some call it um, uh, cruise relief pilot, but the uh, function is all the same. Yeah. And uh, now I would like to tell you a little bit how an engine works, and for that I prepared um, a little slide I show you right now. So, here you see the engine structure, and I would like to explain you a little bit how the engine works. Now, um, we're starting from the front and then going back to the aft. Here, uh, this is the outside air which is being sucked into the engine. This one is the fan itself. The big uh, fan you probably uh, have uh, seen a lot of times now, meanwhile the third time on the outside check with our uh, uh, captain. Here we have the spinner and the air is now entered here into the engine. This one here is the low pressure compressor, so that means the air is being compressed at this stage. Um, we always have one um, fixed part and one variable part, so we call them um, variable state of vein and the other one is called um, state of vein. And altogether, this is one stage. Now, when the air passes through this section, it is being compressed. Here we have the second compression stage. This is called the high uh, compressor um, stage. Now, when the air passes through here, then you have the combustion chamber. That's the beginning of the hot part section of uh, the engine. And here uh, there is fuel injected into, into uh, the combustion chamber and together with the fuel-air mixture which is being ignited by a self-sustaining igniter. Uh, you can compare this a, a little bit like the spark plug in your car. Um, it is accelerated a lot and uh, it helps. Here we have uh, the two turbines itself. Here's the high pressure turbine and here's the low pressure turbine. And at those two stages, um, the energy, the fast, hot traveled um, air, which comes from the combustion chamber, is, um, uh, is used and to turn on our turbine. And last but not least, eventually, here we have the nozzle part and passing the nozzle, it exits back at the end of the engine. Now, at this part here, we have the ignition and that's also what we use when we, uh, when we um, start the engine. We have it up here on our overhead panel, um, right? Here you can see the two ignition um, buttons and usually um, the igniters are on all the time but we, when we have turbulences or when, for example, we are in icing condition we can also turn them on for continuous run. We have two igniters uh, for each engine and then they would uh, be running continuously. But sometimes in the automatic mode, uh, for example, when the flaps are out, 
then also both the igniters are running continuously, continuously. that's just as a backup but uh, as I said it is actually um, self-sustaining all right and this is called a high bypass turbofan which is uh, now the most common airplane um, airplane engine and the reason for this is uh, those two sections here. I didn't talk about those two sections yet. Those are the um, bypass areas and we have air bypassing the hot section which is inside of, uh, of the engine. And now for, for the thrust eventually to uh, be uh, gained you need to know uh, um, the formula about how thrust is uh, being produced and it is dependent on either the mass that is passing through the engine and the second thing is the uh, speed difference so the speed of the of the air mass at the back of the engine is a lot faster than at the entrance and the speed difference um, and the mass is the reason why we get thrust now, with our General Electric um, 90-110 uh, engine, which you have seen on the outside check with uh, our Captain uh, Rick, uh, you have seen it's really huge. And it is huge. We have a 3.25 meter diameter of, um, of our fan. And we have um, bypass ratio and I would like to explain you that a little bit more bypass ratio of 9 to 1 that means if 10 kilograms are passing into the engine we have 9 kilograms passing just on the bypass area and just 1 kilogram is passing through the hot section and modern jet engines are um, uh, we have higher bypass ratios than we used to have and for example, uh, the first 737, uh, the Boeing, it had a bypass ratio of 1 to 1. And at that time, that was already uh, quite impressive. But from, uh, that was around uh, 1964. Meanwhile, um, this our engine has uh, 9.1. And I would say the state-of-the-art engines right now, the most is already a little bit over 12 to 1. So that's quite um, an impressive bypass ratio. And how do they do that? I need to explain you uh, this a little bit more. They have installed a gearbox, which is just after the fan and the low pressure um, compressor. And there is a gearbox installed. Now you might um, ask me, why do they have a gearbox? The reason is easy, because the fan is so big, um, during flight it would um, have two, um, um, at the end of the rotation stage, um, at the outside here, the speed will be too fast, uh, meaning that um, they cannot uh, work efficient anymore. So they need to um, put a gearbox in here and then you have uh, even more higher bypass ratios. And what you probably also uh, saw on uh, modern airplanes is the tooth, uh, the saw tooth at the end here at the nozzle. So by sawtooth, I mean it looks a little bit like the sawtooth, uh, the saw teeth of of a shark, for example. And this is at the end here. Now you might wonder why do they um, do they do this? And the reason for that is um, we have saw teeth either uh, on the one side on the nozzle and on the other side here um, at the end of the engine. And the reason for this is to swirl. Uh, the air which is exhausting the engine and that reduces the noise production at the end here of the airplane. So our engine has a total uh, thrust of 110,000 pound uh, maximum thrust. Um, probably that doesn't really say you a lot so uh, in order to give you uh, to make this uh, more clear for you and uh, 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 I would uh, like to make a comparison. For example, most of you know uh, the 40-ton trucks that uh, that drive on the German uh, autobahn. Uh, I'm sure you know. And uh, one engine uh, of our airplane is capable of pulling one 40-ton uh, truck 
right straight into the air. So I find that very impressive. And um, now you have seen this one here. I just would like to, to show you how um, this airplane now is shown on our um, on our instrument screens. For this, I open the engine page. We have the primary engine page here, and then we have the secondary engine page. Now, here we have the N1, which is the low pressure uh, stage, and here you can see 88.9, that's um, a percentage of the maximum uh, the maximum rotation speed, which is at right now 101.8. Here we have the exhaust gas temperature, so that's at the end of our uh, hot section core. Here we continue, we have the high pressure um, shaft speed, then we have the fuel flow. Right now we have 4.7 tons of fuel flow an hour per engine. So that makes uh, right now we have 9.4 tons an hour um, fuel flow. That is roughly 160 kilograms a uh, minute. So that's quite impressive too. And here we have some more uh, oil information. We have oil pressure, we have oil temperature and oil quantity. And last but not least, probably you cannot see it really well. We have the indication of shaft, um, of the shaft. Um, vibration eventually so i hope i could give you some uh, more detail here about how an engine works and um, and for now um, we just passed uh, beijing right now and i would like to take uh, the opportunity to hand over to benjamin he's going to tell you a little bit more about this flight towards frankfurt airport I think it's my turn to say some uh, some things nobody had heard before. I just learned a lot again. <laughs> so uh, yeah, well maybe I give you control. So you have control, you have 14. I have control, I have 14. All right, yeah, we we'll, uh, just said it. We just passed by the city of Beijing. I uh, had a look outside, but unfortunately it was, uh, it was really dark. We saw nothing. Um, yeah, the clouds and the smog in Beijing were probably uh, too much to see anything. Um, yeah, I'll just uh, tell you a few words uh, about our route tonight. I think I always do it on the flights because <laughs> I remember doing it on the last two, fl two flights also. So uh, I think I'm the guy for the route explanation. Um, yeah, we just are over at Beijing. Uh, we now continue northbound and uh, we'll enter the Mongolian airspace. Um, well, let's see. I think within the next, yeah, within the next half an hour, then we we'll pass through Mongolia. Um, that will also last like half an hour, and uh, then we'll enter the Russian airspace, and it will take us, uh, I would say, like eight or nine hours to completely fly through Russia. Um, yeah, a few cities we will pass are uh, Irkutsk, uh, Krasnoyarsk, and then there's a lot of. Uh, yeah, nothing, no big cities, and uh, we'll enter the civilization again around St. Petersburg, pass uh, along the Baltic states, uh, fly through Poland, and from there on it's uh, yeah, flying over at Berlin, and then to, to Frankfurt. Uh, yeah, I think Greg already said it before, we, uh, we are quite fully loaded today. Um, I think it's around 90 tons of load, I just quickly check it on the flight plan. Yeah, 97 uh, tons of load today. Uh, the only special things uh, I'm, aware, I'm aware of are, again, two cars, but this time we're flying Japanese cars to Europe and not uh, Japanese cars to Japan, like on the first flight. You might have seen it on the first Airclubs video. And I think the other stuff is all a lot of electronics, small parts, which we are taking from Japan and Korea back to Europe. Um, another thing uh, which might be interesting for you, you might have wondered before, uh, we always fly uh, 
finding an altitude of feet and maintaining flight levels at feet. We started the last two flights. And uh, when we were climbing out of zone, the controller gave it an altitude in meters. And that's why, because uh, China and Mongolia are one of the few countries where in the world who still use the metric system and fly according to, uh, to meters. So that's why we are currently maintaining an altitude of 9,200 meters. You can see that here, and that's, uh, well, if you, if you calculate it, then we come up with uh, 30,100 feet. Later on, when we pass from Mongolia to Russia, there will be a changeover, and we uh, will again keep uh, an even flight level, like level 300, probably, if we won't do any step climb until then. Uh, since I'm already here on the primary flight display, I, I also could uh, tell a little bit more about it. Those people of you who have uh, flown uh, smaller airplanes like Cessna or have, have seen before might know the uh, classic instruments, the analog instruments you have on the panel in front of you. And uh, basically uh, the areas are, are the same. They are. Uh, kind of the same on this display than in the Cessna. Uh, it's called the Basic T, you might have heard it on, the, uh, on your first mission, so you have read about it on the internet maybe. Um, that means uh, the instruments are, um, are arranged in the form of a T. So in the middle of that T is always the, uh, the horizon. Uh, left to that, you also in the Cessna do you have the, the speed, so we have the speed scale here. And to the right of the horizon, you always have uh, the altitude. We also have it here, that's uh, the altitude band. And uh, below that line, which makes the T, you uh, have the compass rows, which on our plane is also the small part down here, but you basically have the idea of uh, the heading you are going, the heading and the track. So basically that makes uh, that the T, which everybody knows from small airplanes, and we also have it on the big one. I used to fly other airplanes, but I think the 777 is uh, by far the best and, uh, well, joyful uh, airplanes to fly. Well, I used to fly, um, I started on the Boeing 737, which is uh, basically the 777 just smaller and older. That was fun too, but uh, the 777 is more developed, uh, everything's new, and they have more, uh, uh, more computers helping you and looking after everything. Fly by wire? Fly by example. wire, yeah. yeah I, in between I flew an Airbus A320, so that's basically the same idea with fly by wire, but uh, well, the Airbus just have the, uh, I think it's called joystick <laughs> to the right. Side stick. Oh, it's side stick. Oh, I, I can't remember that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, he's now yeah. making fun yeah, of. Yeah, that's uh, a side stick. So, uh, but, right. but the Boeing still have the yoke. We we explained it on the uh, I think on the second flight from yeah. uh, from Tokyo to Seoul. So you may have a, uh, a look on that YouTube video. Um, yeah, but still, well, now I'm on the triple seven and I uh, enjoy it a lot. It's pretty fun to fly. It has a lot of thrust. Um, 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 it does. Uh, I started on the Airbus 300, uh, which also had a lot of thrust, uh, which was a very fun airplane to fly, but also um, a little bit difficult because uh, Lufthansa used to fly it usually just between um, their hubs, Munich, Frankfurt, sometimes they have flown to Hamburg, to Berlin, so it was a hub feeder, and uh, for this reason this airplane wasn't built, so we had uh, just a little bit of fuel in the tanks, and. Uh, the performance was way um, uh, was uh, was just uh, great, but of course, if we fly this airplane with no uh, load, then of course the performance is also great. Even though we are able to reduce the thrust at the takeoff, but um, even though uh, even when we uh, reduce the thrust 25%, you still have a, a, a lot of uh, performance. And after the Airbus 300, I used to fly the Airbus 320, oh. and now here the 777. I have to admit, um, it is a great airplane, but I need to say, Airbus is, is building very nice, and, um, and um, um, from a technical point of view, also very nice airplanes as well. And uh, you know what, uh, actually, it's a little bit like whether you prefer more a Mercedes or you prefer more a 
VW or a uh, Nordi. Uh, so uh, it's all flying. <laughs> now for those of you who have seen uh, the air clip part one from Frankfurt to Tokyo Narita, uh, you know that um, I'm all into aviation and when I'm not flying the Boeing 777 as I work, I do some uh, flight instruction on uh, smaller airplanes on uh, uh, a small airfield in Switzerland nearby Zurich and um, I also enjoy very much to go into the air with my paraglider. Now um, I, I'm focusing there a little bit on um, cross-country flights and I didn't reach 100 kilometers yet but I'm uh, nearby so my longest flight was 80 kilometers and uh, I think this year 2017 I need to um, need to step up and uh, make it over 100 kilometers and um, next year I would like to do the tandem flight and uh, so a tandem flight um, education and for all of you who don't just want to fly with me on the Boeing 777 here with Lufthansa Cargo, uh, you can also um, come and fly with me on my paraglider, on my tandem paraglider uh, from 2018 forward. Okay guys, um, um, I hope you like the, uh, the, 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 the lessons Sebastian gave us, uh, the few things I told you, so uh, yeah, now we still have nine hours uh, ahead of us through the night, through the dark night. Um, so uh, our cameraman uh, needs some rest and needs to get some sleep so that he won't forget switching on all the cameras for landing so that you can enjoy how I will land the airplane at Frankfurt. So uh, yeah, I think we'd say uh, we'll see you in eight to nine hours from now.
our destination for this rotation. We started in Frankfurt and we'll be getting back there soon. We have had uh, nine and a half hours flight with the sun chasing us all the way. So we've had a kind of a dusky, dawny feeling. Not sure knowing if, if it's a night or a day coming or a day going, <laughs> basically. Uh, I've got pretty much one hour to go and uh, shortly we'll be starting to prepare for descent, getting all the information we need for that, um, weather, and active runway and so forth. And uh, we'll be doing some briefing, uh, going through some setups as well for the approach. And uh, right now we're cruising smoothly at 34,000. And uh, if we take a look at our current weight, we can notice that we've burnt quite a few bit of fuel. We started with better takeoff uh, weight of 335 tons. And right now we're down uh, to 200 and yeah, that's not 58, right? Yeah. 258 will be uh, landing with about 250 tons um, and uh, yeah that's what you get after 10 and a half hour flight bringing just under 100 tons of freight from um, one part of the world to the other side and uh, Ben would you like to add anything at this time um, no, yeah, well, um, I'm sad that it's over, the trip coming to an end, we had a lot of fun the, the last five days. Yes. Uh, so I hope you had fun as well, um, watching us flying the rotation to Asia. And uh, yeah, since the cameraman is uh, back awake, uh, I think the chances are good. That you'll see it uh, when we land at Frankfurt, and I think he'll shortly switch on all the cameras here in the cockpit again. Yes, and then you'll perform the landing. I'll perform the landing. Yeah, don't put too much pressure on me, but yeah. I think it's <laughs> it's gonna be fine after I'm the sure long you're night gonna flight. Do just yeah. fine. Yes, I think so. So yeah, well, uh, enjoy the rest of the, uh, of the film of the trip, and uh, yeah, well. I'll do my best to, to <laughs> perform a good landing. Very good. Sounds great. And uh, for now we'll just uh, pause the camera and we'll pick it up just before we start leaving the uh, cruising altitude. And then you'll get some action before we land. Sometimes it's just using 2.5 center. I think it's a half an hour later. <coughs> ah, okay. Then they're just using... They're using both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then, uh, since we're arriving yeah. at uh, 3.41, should be open. All right. Uh, I think we got to wake up. Yes. We got to wake up Sebastian. Sebi. Morning, Sebi. <laughs> Should be all all rested now. Oh, yeah. And he of course, heard it's had so much first, sleep. Not the first, uh, well, first try, uh, first yeah. shine. And the sun is still trying to catch up. Directly all that burden, but you won't see much. 
Yeah, it's all overcast. Zero Trans 3612, contact Sweden, 128 decimal 175, goodbye. And there comes the top of descent in about 8 minutes. So, we still have to wait for the ages. Uh, I want it. Um, the arrival is 18. Doing it the old school way. Yeah. I'm just thinking. At all one. At all triple one, rain radar identified low squawk 1,100 feet. Temperature 15. 2.12. and H 1004. SO Pascal. Okay. So, uh, Alice uh, Yankee, too far right? That's yeah. the slightly. Steeper one, steeper one. And, uh, or uh, miles two five center, but I think. Two four left nine five two contact Warsaw radar one two five decimal four five zero goodbye. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Well, we need seventeen twenty seven. Auto rate three will break us down in within two thousand two hundred. Yep. So that's so, fine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can enter it right now. I, I, I would go for auto brake 3 and uh, yeah. I also would go for flaps 30 since it is the uh, steeper minus approach. All set. Do you need any radios, uh, additional additional radio settings? Um, yeah, you can set a Fox Fox mic on the left one. On the left? And I would leave the right one open for That's automatic right. tuning. Okay. In that case, I already could start a briefing. Sure. All right, first for the descent, grid altitude's uh, maximum 4,800 from now on, so uh, you're safe to descend any time. Then later on, the MSA uh, in our approach sector is 3,500 feet. Yeah. For the uh, missed approach, it will be a uh, sector of 4,300 feet. Then the uh, intermediate altitude will be 5,000 feet. We'll leave it at uh, Edepu. That's 13.7 miles of the ILS DB India Fox. Then we'll have the 3.2 degree glide slope. It's also programmed, okay. All right. Uh, final altitude is also at Edepu at 5,000 feet. Yeah. Then we have the minimums of uh, 560. Both sides, Both okay. Sides. All right. Um, yeah, and in case of missed approach, we'll climb straight ahead to uh, 6.3 miles of Fox Fox Mike or 800 feet. Then a right turn on track uh, 320 to uh, Taunus View on from there, radial uh, 084 to Metro, and we'll climb to 5,000 feet. As I said, MSA 4,300 feet, and I will do the acceleration at the uh, Mr. Approach altitude of 5,000 feet. Very good. And it's all in the box, programmed. Great. Yeah, the runway length, 2,800 meters. You just checked it. We'll, uh, we'll need one. Lufthansa Cargo 8387, descent flight level 320. Okay. Lufthansa Cargo 8387, leaving 340, descending level 320. Um, yeah, we'll need roughly 1,800 meters, so we still have 1,000 meters uh, left. And with auto brake 3, uh, we are aiming for the last high speed exit to the left, which is Papa 20. Perfect. Yeah, we have no status messages, messages uh, shown. Yeah. So we are all set. Um, yeah, in that case, that was the uh, decent checklist. Descent, recall, checked, notes, checked, auto brake, three, landing data. BRF 30, 146, minimum spiral 560 feet. BREF 30, 146 meters, 5 and 
130. Yeah. You can just switch on the uh, supernumerary. Yeah. Supernumerary. I practiced it. Yeah. Carrox coming up. Not too much going on right now. I think At least it's gonna be not on this frequency. Not a, yeah, but uh, okay. I don't know. I mean, at that time of the day, uh, shortly after five, there should be a little bit of traffic. Yeah. I've arrived here at five o'clock and uh, was a lot almost had to fly. Cargo 887, reduce slowly to 230 knots or mini clean, whatever is higher. Cargo 8387, reducing minimum clean, it'll be 230. Let's get buckled. 30 right now, I think it won't be a straight and railway. Right. Good morning, Lufthansa 631 uh, yeah. Heavy, Ask Flight Level 245, descending so 220. Lufthansa 631, good morning to DMAP, then Kerak, Kerak 25 November Station. Lufthansa 631, DMAP, Kerak, Kerak 25 November Station. I'll probably give us a extended from 413 to whatever. I'll leave it open. Yeah. Because it's easy enough to insert uh, 416 and 26 later. UPS 270, continue climb to level 250. Nice lenticular cloud formations on the right there. Just the Cargo 837, now this right after 1208. Chip. Cargo 8387, uh, give it a call, it's on the up. Just. Oh, yeah. Driver Cargo 837, mark. 
that the impression I'm giving? Or <laughs> ah, no, you, you've told no. me away. You're you're good to uh, good to go, All manual right. if you like. Yeah, I'll do it manually. Okay, have fun. Yeah. 
Und Glide. Final Odds. Ne, Final Tips. That's at the depot, the final odds. Yeah, that's another one mile. So we can leave the 5,000 for the Mr. Proach? Yes, set for Mr. Proach. 5,000 and 13.5. A depot final altitude checked. Looking good. Frankfurt is still asleep. Yeah, it looks like it. All right. Look for the four four three. Connect April one two one eight five. Just four four three one two one eight five. Thank you. Two. Flaps 20. Gear down. Flaps 20. Yeah, set flaps 20 speed. Uh, flaps 30. Flaps 30. That's because I want to. Set down 37 to the left of the short November 1 1. Uh, left Papa on house lot, uh, Papa 1 Vietnam, uh, 37. Left the cargo, 387, wind 19, degrees 8 knots, 2-5 right, clear out. Cargo 387, clear left, runway 2-5 right. Landing checklists. Landing. Checklist complete. Checklist complete. Clear to land. Nice job, 
climb the drill. You have control. Okay. Air clips the viewers. We have now landed. Control Carway 287 to left up all short November 11. Left of Papa, short November 11, left of the cargo. Welcome to Frankfurt. Finding items without APU. When you look at that, the sun is trying to get through. Yeah, so basically we follow him to the. Uh, yeah, follow that plane. Yeah. If uh, if they did get out in time to film us, yeah, well, um, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully. You had to work a little bit uh, during short final there, right? Yeah, I noticed the left was, uh, the wind changed on very yeah, short yeah. final. All yeah. of a sudden, you needed ten percent more. Yeah. So that was. Uh, Bit of a wake up call, but hey. Yeah, I got the coffee before, so that's fine. Anything yeah. else would be boring, right? Yeah. Should be him, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. Great stuff. That's good. And luckily the landing was no. It was okay. <laughs> you arrived with honor. With honor, yeah. yes. <laughs> you don't have to go. Uh, Enter through the back door. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can use the front door. Yeah, <laughs> through the E and E. <laughs> we definitely got some good footage from the ground. <laughs> High five. Down right engine. Right here, control switch, confirm, cut off. Right side, confirm. Cut off. Thank you. Good morning, April, the Panzer Cargo 8387 on the bridge. The Panzer Cargo 8387, good morning. Texas of Oxford 211, via November 11, right turn November, November 14. November 11, November, November 14, Fox 211. Yeah. I think yeah. there's nobody at the office right now. No, no. who are you waiting? Just be waiting to be safe. <laughs> to be safe. Just to be safe, yeah. Hi, guys. Hey, Pokemon of Kansas 6th Street. 
Ladies and gentlemen, air clips viewers, welcome to Frankfurt. We, uh, we've had a three-part flight now from uh, Frankfurt, starting here, going to Tokyo, Narita, and then to Seoul, Incheon, and now we've arrived back to Frankfurt where we started. We're back home and uh, a little bit tired since it's been a long flight through the night and uh, all that remains for me is basically to stay awake until I get home and then uh, my lovely wife and two kids gonna keep me busy for a few more days and then I'll go off to Los Angeles to rest <laughs> and uh, with these words I would like to thank you all for watching uh, for, and, and following us on our journey our, our uh, adventure and I hope you could learn and get some learn from it, get some good impressions from our profession and from the significant uh, airplane here, the magnificent 777 freighter. And uh, maybe as a last 
little view. Uh, you should stay glued to your screens because now the cameraman is going to show you the E and E compartment, the electronic heart of this uh, advanced aircraft. All the best. one by one should that be necessary. 